Welcome back to Judgment Decision Making. I'm Dr. Padilla. Now we're going to talk about how causes can trump statistics. Let's start with the scenario. Here we have a situation where a cab was involved in a hit and run accident, and there are two cab companies in the city. One has green cabs and the other one has blue cabs. You're given this additional information. 85% of the cabs in the city are green, 15 are blue. A witness identified the cab as blue. Note that this witness correctly identified each of the two cab colors 85% of the time and failed 20% of the time. It was at night. Sometimes it's hard to see the cab colors at night. So that's why this eyewitness was failing some amount of the time to recognize the color. And now the question to you is, what is the probability that the cab involved in the accident was blue rather than green? Go ahead and try to make that estimate now. And note that there's two pieces of information here. We have a base rate. This is the proportion of green and blue cabs in the whole population of cabs. And we have probability given to us by the accuracy of the eyewitness. Now there is uh, statistical ways to integrate these two types of information, which is expressed in this equation here. Now, unless you are a genius, you probably weren't able to do this math in your head, um, but it, this suggests that there is a 41% chance that the cab was blue when you integrate those two probabilities. Okay, what I suspect you probably did is you ignored the base rate, which is what the vast majority of people do. So rather than thinking about the proportion of green and blue cabs, you kind of just maybe didn't think about that deeply. <laughs> Instead, you focused on the eyewitness. Eyewitness said the cab was blue. The eyewitness is correct 80% of the time. The probability that the cab is blue is 80. That's what the vast majority of people say. This is an example of base rate neglect, which we have talked about in the past. I'll link to the video up here somewhere. So what we're seeing here is a statistical base rate. This is just numeric information and people tend to ignore that information. If we change it to be a causal base rate, which gives us information that helps us create a story in our mind, people tend to focus on it more. Notice this is just numbers. 85% of cabs are green, 15 are blue. Here we have green cabs are involved in 85% of accidents. So that suggests a story that maybe these green cab drivers are more risky. Maybe the hiring policies are more lax. Um, you know, there's something about these green cab drivers that is contributing to all of these accidents. We're creating stereotypes in our mind that explain this proportion of drivers that drive for green cabs being responsible for these accidents. But note that the two types of information are mathematically indistinguishable, but they're psychologically quite different. 85% of cabs in the city are green, and green cabs are involved in 85% of accidents. That is the same statistical information there, but the one on the left is um, a base rate that focuses on just the statistics, and people tend to ignore it, and the one on the right creates a story. And people can actually focus on that information more and make more effective decisions in this uh, cab scenario, which is interesting because it's really grabbing their attention. So they're drawn to focus some on the base rate because it's part of this causal narrative that is created in the story. Type 1 processing can deal with stories in which the elements are causally linked, but, has a, but is weak in statistical reasoning. Type one is really all about quickly trying to make sense. So if it can come to a conclusion, if it can suggest causation for something, it will do that very quickly. It's type two processing that has to do the more complex mental calculation. So this brings us to the question of, can psychology be taught? You see, we have all of these scenarios that we've been discussing about causal base rate and statistical base rate. I've kind of suggested that to you many times. And the unfortunate part is that it's 
so ingrained into our type one processing, it can be really hard to override, meaning that it's very hard to teach people um, how to understand this information. So let's think about this in the context of another psychological um, situation or psychological effect that's also fairly hard to teach. This is the bystander effect. And I'm gonna show you a clip that illustrates the bystander effect. As the thief moves in, will our bystander notice? He clearly has. What's more, he's seen that other people in the queue have noticed too. Now, what's he going to do about it? The answer is nothing. After all, no one else in the queue reacts, so why should he? Chances are, you wouldn't have done anything either. Would you say something? If you saw someone get their wallet stolen, would you speak up? This gentleman didn't. Let's look at a larger group of people and see how they respond to an event where someone might need help. So this is in a school. This group of students was actually trying to replicate the bystander effect and this student is pretending to be hurt and seeing how many people will come to his aid. People just walking right around him, walking past him. Note that it doesn't look like he's playing, not to me. He's kind of fallen in an awkward position. So in that particular example, 26 people walked by this individual laying on the ground and the video cut out. I'm going to just assume that the next person that walked by him um, tried to help in some way. So then the question for you is, if, if that's the general population of people who actually help, 1 in 26, if you look at a picture like this, there's about 30 people in here, one person would help someone injured. Who, who is that? Can you pick out the only person that would help an injured person? You know, it's, it's much harder when you're presented with people looking at you and their faces and trying to figure out who is the only nice one of this group. For me, even though I teach this, even though I know the rates and how uh, consistent the bystander effect is, it is so hard for me to think that only one person would help people. In fact, it's much easier to find people that I think probably wouldn't help anyone. Maybe I could pick two or three people out that wouldn't help anyone, but it's just impossible to believe that only a single person from this group would help an individual that was injured in some way. So that's to say that it is very difficult to teach these types of psychological effects that involve understanding and actually using this base rate information. I showed you multiple videos of the base rates of individuals helping each other, but it's still hard to enact that information when you are faced with people and you have to make real judgments. Okay, so summary here is type one processing will create stories in which the elements are causally linked, but it is a but it is weak in statistical reasoning. So what I've been trying to illustrate here is that it's just so hard for us to apply these probabilities that we know to be true to a real event uh, in our lives. People tend to ignore statistical base rates and it is hard to override type one processing and use type two when a causal story is created. Yeah.